In celebration of Clinical Trials Day, I'm Dr. Kim Margolin, the Medical Director of the Melanoma Program at St. John's Cancer Institute. We strive to provide the best multidisciplinary care for adult patients with cancer. I'm Dr. Leland Foshag. I'm the Program Director for the Complex General Surgery Oncology Program, uh, named after Donald O. Morton here at the St. John's Cancer Institute. It goes without saying the importance of clinical trials in uh, modern medicine and academics. This institute was founded on the basis of clinical trials back more than 30 years ago, beginning with a variety of melanoma vaccine trials under the direction of Dr. Morton. He developed the technique of sentinel lymph node procedure, which was validated by clinical trials and has been shown to completely change the surgical management of primary melanomas. I'm Dr. Przemek Trudowski and I'm a medical oncologist uh, specializing in genitourinary uh, cancers. So that includes prostate, bladder, kidney, testicular cancer. And I work at St. John's Cancer Institute, uh, St. John's uh, Hospital in Santa Monica in California. Um, our institute is very heavily involved in the conduct uh, of uh, clinical trial in uh, cancer patients. In many ways, clinical trials represent standard of care for treatment with, uh, uh, in, in patients with many malignancies. Uh, really, all of the advancements that we've made in oncology, all these transformational treatments that we have, really uh, are the result of uh, participation of patients in clinical trials, the conduct of clinical trials. That's how all the new drugs are being developed. I'm Dr. Santosh Kesari. I'm Director of Neuro-Oncology at Providence St. John's Health Center and also Director at Pacific Neuroscience Institute in Santa Monica. Clinical trials are very important, especially uh, in the area of brain cancer because the need is so great. The current treatments are great, but we need to do better. And that's why clinical trials are important. We have a variety of clinical trials for brain cancer that involve surgery uh, with surgical clinical trials, making vaccines out of tumor tissue. We have trials involving doing radiation after surgery in the OR, intra intraoperative radiation therapy, as well as a variety of trials in the beginning uh, of the newly diagnosed brain tumors versus at the first recurrence or second or further recurrence. In many cases, uh, patients may not qualify for trials for one reason or another. And in those situations, we still have options. We use the latest in molecular profiling to come up with a innovative treatment options for patients uh, when they don't qualify for trials. My name is Dr. Parvin Petty, and I'm a breast medical oncologist here at St. John's Cancer Institute. Clinical trials are so important for the field of cancer. This is why we've come as far as we have. Whenever a new drug is studied in the lab, the first thing you need is to actually test it out, first in a small number of patients, just to see that it's safe and make sure that it really is starting to work, and then really see in a bigger trial whether it beats what's on the market at the moment. And this is how we've made stride after stride against all cancers, and how we've made a lot of cancers from being completely incurable to now curable. And field of breast cancer especially has really benefited from clinical trials and research. It's been such an active area of research and we have medications coming out every year that are newly um, studied in a clinical trial and shown to be beneficial. Most of our clinical trials in melanoma and other skin cancers are based on some form of immunotherapy, although occasionally there is a, a role for certain kinds of targeted uh, chemotherapy drugs that are generally taken orally. There's quite a bit of interest in novel vaccines that are being developed against a variety of cancers. There's recently been a novel uh, vaccine that was developed by the Moderna company, those uh, who brought us one of the first COVID vaccines. In this case, patients' own tumor DNA is used as the source of the antigenic material from which the vaccine is made, and it acts to cause the body to make uh, its own antigens and then sensitize the immune cells against those antigens, very similar to any other kind of vaccine. 
It's very difficult to get the immune system to respond to a vaccine when the tumor has already become established and has essentially tolerized the immune system to fail to recognize its antigens. However, when it's given to patients uh, at high risk of developing a cancer or those who have had the cancer removed and may have no more than a, a tiny little trace of tumor in their body, those vaccines may be far more powerful. And that's the setting in which the recent mRNA vaccine from Moderna for melanoma based on patients' own melanoma cells was uh, reported at a recent cancer meeting and showed a benefit over standard therapy following surgery. That's only small examples of the importance of clinical trials in progressing medicine into the 22nd centuries. And I think that any of the other speakers that you hear or talk will echo the same thing in all the different areas of medicine. As far as our fellows are concerned, from the training they get in clinical trials that they base their research on, that they take to all the other venues that they go to and across the country and even into other international venues for uh, training purposes as well as furthering our clinical trials were multinational trials and it just speaks to the importance for the surgical oncology fellowship program. Clinical trials are particularly valuable in patients who may uh, have very advanced, heavily pretreated cancers where there's really no available uh, effective standard of care. Then um, promising experimental therapies have particularly significant uh, value in those circumstances. But this is not the only scenario uh, when clinical trials can be ap applicable. Uh, some of the trials that we have include patients with relatively early diagnosis of cancer when we employ the best standard of care with addition of novel experimental agent that is postulated to improve the outcomes of already existing uh, effective therapies. So there are many, many scenarios uh, in which uh, the clinical trials are applicable uh, to our patients. So as a patient, you should always ask your doctor, um, can I have access to a clinical trial? I understand this is a standard, but can something, something else be tried that could be better than this? And the answer is always take the clinical trial if it's a good study, because that's an additional uh, way you have against a breast cancer or any cancer that you're dealing with, um, as opposed to what's already on the market and all could be inferior to the next best thing. Otherwise, you'll miss out and it will be many years before that drug may actually get approval and be on the market. But if you had gone on a clinical trial, you could have benefited from it earlier. And of course, you move the field forward and you benefit many, many uh, patients that are coming after you. So clinical trials could not be any more important uh, to field of cancer. Um, so it's critical that patients be offered this and discuss with their doctors what is the trial they can enroll in. And we have many here that are open at St. John's for breast cancer patients, whether it's with new immunotherapy drugs, whether with new vaccines. Um, and it's exciting. It's exciting to be a part of it as an investigator and exciting to be able to offer that to patients. So as a physician and as a scientist, we uh, participate in clinical trials. We have a great team of doctors, nurse practitioners, uh, physician assistants, and research coordinators that help us through the whole process of identifying patients, discussing with patients options, and then starting the formal process of enrolling in a clinical trial. Uh, my name's Emma Chacon. I'm a research nurse here at St. John's Cancer Institute. I work for the principal investigators here running our clinical trials, and I manage our patient care for anyone who's enrolled into a trial. What that can look like is starting off by giving patients a consultation, giving them all the information that they need, to decide if this is the study that they want to do. With clinical trials, it's not anything that is mandatory, it's completely voluntary. We're seeking to give people treatment options if they would like them. For a clinical trial, we have to go through a rigorous process of making sure we're finding the right patient. 
That means we need to assess them and say, you have the right diagnosis, you have no other comorbidities that would be concerning, and it is safe for you to go on this, and we think you would benefit. And as a physician, I guide the patients in terms of what the options are uh, that are available currently for each particular patient, whether it's at our site or through our network of hospitals in, uh, in Providence, Southern California. We have trials at multiple different institutions at Providence here. So that's really the main uh, approach is really to see us and we'll help you identify options. We're actively recruiting trials across all of the stages. We have a trial that is randomized three ways for patients who've already had their melanoma and draining lymph nodes removed if they're felt to be at a certain level of risk of relapse. We have uh, studies of intralesional therapy and studies of um, the novel imaging uh, PET scan. We also have second and third line studies for patients who don't get into a long-term remission from their first line of treatment and those involve some of these novel cytokines such as I mentioned earlier and uh, another vaccine and a lesional th uh, injected therapy. So we are enrolling in multiple breast cancer trials uh, right now. Some are with a new imaging modality for breast cancer patients. Um, another one is with a new immunotherapy drug for triple negative breast cancer patients who don't qualify and cannot get any benefit from the immunotherapy drugs that are currently on the market. And we also have a trial with a vaccine before surgery. So those are some of our active trials right now, and there's always going to be newer ones and uh, ones that we add. So it's important for the patients to ask and inquire um, because you don't lose anything and you have everything to gain by enrolling in a clinical study. We very well will uh, approach them for samples, from blood samples to tumor samples, uh, participate in surveillance. We have genetics clinical trials going on for high-risk patients. There's a myriad of things that anybody who comes in, in some cases even without a diagnosis of cancer, but in most cases who've had cancer, in some cases early stages, some cases late stages, are asked to participate in a clinical research program. The, the clinical trial is really my main focus as far as um, clinical research. It's, I think, the most exciting part of oncology when you can participate in the process of um, development of new exciting compounds and kind of push the field forward. This is only the only really mechanism in existence that allows uh, development and ultimately approval of, uh, of new drugs for, for cancer uh, for our patients. So it's a vitally important area. Even in trials that don't work, there are a subset of patients that do respond very well. And as we open more trials, the more options we give patients, the more chances a patient has to respond to something. Because until we do the trial, we don't know what the benefit is. And I think that's the exciting end the anxiety provoking part of any clinical trial for the doctor as well as the patient uh, because of the uncertainty. But many of these trials I feel over the years have helped some patients and participating in trials. What we're learning is that every person is unique. They have, the tumors are different. Even though they're called the same thing, they have different tumor markers. And the drugs that we're developing are really uh, targeted therapeutics and immunotherapy. So they really uh, select for uh, patients who have certain markers. And uh, as we do more trials, we find out that some patients respond better than others because of those markers. And sometimes we know it before, sometimes it's not till the study is done. So the bottom line is, if you've been diagnosed with cancer, and it could be any cancer, not just breast cancer, any cancer, ask your doctor, yes, this is the plan you've proposed to me, but is there a clinical study that could build on that, could potentially be better, that would make sense for me. And that would be just one more option that you have. And a lot of times it could be a better option because most studies are designed in a way that you would get more, not the less, than what you would be standard of care. If you're worried, if you're anxious, if you're not quite sure if a clinical trial is what's right for you, you never have to make that commitment on the day you talk to your doctor about it. 
It's something that is voluntary. It's something you can withdraw from at any time. It's not a commitment that is for the rest of your life. We want to make sure that we're giving you what you want. So feel free to just ask about them, get some information, and your decisions about your body should be informed. We appreciate our patients' participation in clinical trials for their own benefit, of course, but also for other future patients that benefit from that. that that's the only method that we really have for development of uh, new um, agents, new drugs for, for cancer patients. Uh, that's how these drugs can ultimately uh, end up being approved and widely used. They have to be tested in a very kind of sophisticated, um, robust way, which, which really the clinical trial platform um, allows us to do. So here at St. John's Cancer Institute, our goal is not just to further medicine, find new discoveries. We're also looking to take care of our patients. That is what we have at the forefront. So anybody who's possibly on the fence about whether or not they want to participate in a clinical trial, my advice is go out there and talk to somebody. Talk to me, find a study that works for you on clinicaltrials.gov. The more information you have, the more confident you can be that you're making the right choice.